January 2015. I had owned my affiliate for four years. And I was one of those guys who did... I watched every single video that CrossFit put out. I went to every single seminar, did every single course, got every single certification. I was living and breathing CrossFit. And I received an email one day, 2015, January, from CrossFit HQ saying that Greg Lasman was coming to New Zealand for the CrossFit tour. He was going to Queenstown for the CrossFit tour, but that he would be in Auckland where I was the week prior. And they were reaching out because we were running a competition that month, and oh, sorry, the next month in Feb. Um, a really well-respected competition that had a lot of the community come and take and be a part of. All the all the gym owners were there, all the top athletes in New Zealand, all the community got together at our box for this competition. And HQ must have found that out and were reaching out to see if they could come and surprise the community uh, with a visit from Greg and a a talk from Greg to the community. And as you can imagine, um, as, a, as a young box owner and someone who worshipped coach, who worshipped Greg really, because um, I felt like what he created gave me a way out of the machine that was the corporate gym model. And so really held him to high esteem. And so, of course, we agreed. I've said, absolutely, we'll make sure that there's half an hour um, break between heats where he can come and speak over the lunch period, over the lunch time period. And we didn't announce it. We didn't tell we didn't tell anyone what was happening, but we did say that there'd be a big surprise and to stick around during that half an hour break to not leave the facility, but to stick around, that people would not want to miss this thing that was happening. And we had a big gift basket that my wife made up for Greg to give him. Um... It was all confirmed, we were ready to go, and 12.30, I remember 12.30 came, the last heat finished, and I was just sending people out, I was emceeing, so I was on the floor, but I was sending people out to check for them every kind of five minutes, I'd go and see if Greg's here yet, go and see if Greg's here yet, and uh, 12.30 came, 12.40 came, 12.50 came, our next heat had to start at 1pm, and uh, Greg had not shown up. Uh, we tried to get in touch with the person that we were communicating with at HQ to see what was happening, if he was still coming. No response. And uh, Greg just never turned up. Now, it seems ridiculous and silly now looking back, you know, five years later, but I remember at the time I was 25, no, I was, <laughs> I was 28. I wasn't a child, really. I just remembered being absolutely crushed, just crushed with disappointment crushed with embarrassment that the crowd was expecting this thing to happen and it didn't happen. Um, this was going to be my big moment to have Greg Glasman at my CrossFit affiliate. And um, yeah, it hurt. It hurt a lot. Um, and I still don't know what the story was, what the reason was. There's, there was probably a very good reason why he didn't turn up. And again, looking back now, it's not a big deal. That's stupid. But what happened this weekend just took me back to that moment of disappointment and hurt. I've always thought of Greg as a bit of a rebel, but a very intelligent man that would go against culture to see something improve, to do whatever it takes to, you know, to go against the system and to break the mold. And so I always thought that was admirable. And even though as an affiliate owner, I felt like I got very minimal support by HQ or from Greg. Um, I still really looked up to him. I still really looked up to Coach, the original, the founder of the thing that I've now built my life around. I moved to Australia in 2016, the year after Greg disappointed me, and um, started my second affiliate here. So I was running my affiliate in New Zealand remotely. I started a fresh new affiliate here on the Gold Coast, and I also started working as a business coach, specifically in the CrossFit space. I was traveling the world, speaking to CrossFit gyms, um, and helping them kind of improve their businesses and, and their communities. So I was really deep, deep, deep into the CrossFit world. And kind of reminiscing and thinking back this week on the whole journey, I realized that, you know what, I actually had zero interaction or zero connection with HQ or the leadership. It was all just with local box owners like myself, just passionate young people that wanted to kind of 
go their own way and uh, build something for themselves. All the joy, all the fulfillment, all the purpose, um, it was all just with real local people running the local boxes, uh, the coaches, the members, and just people like me that wanted to build something for themselves and make a difference in their communities. And that to me is the thing that is real. That's the thing that will remain. That is the thing that is that won't be shaken. And so this week I had kind of two emotions. I was incredibly sad. I think more so mourning what could have been. Just knowing what Greg's original vision was and what we were moving towards. Um, and then obviously we've seen that kind of slowly but surely being steered off path over the last few years and this you know this one event is only the tipping point it's only the thing that kind of tips it over the edge it's been coming like we've been we've all been seeing it kind of deteriorate slowly and we knew that there would, a day would come where you know crap would hit the fan um but i think i was just mourning and feeling sad about what could have been but at the same time i've been quite excited this week because uh, i think for myself and i know for many others we've been craving something fresh something new um, some new direction, new leadership. And I, I know that within our community, there are some incredible people that um, have the ability, the leadership ability and the resources to move this thing, continue to move this thing forwards in a fresh new direction and a healthier direction where um, not only the box owners and their members, but the athletes can be more valued and can benefit more from the movement. I don't know what's going on in Greg's life in his mind i don't know what struggles he's dealing with at the moment or why he's at this point where he's making s stupid mistakes and um making really unwise decisions with the the statements and the comments he's made um and i've always been a person who has been you know has leaned towards compassion and forgiveness and second chances um but i also understand that our actions have real consequences and personally i don't think uh, Greg's actions is something that's going to be able to be um, saved or salvaged. I think the damage is done. And even the half-hearted apology, um, you know, it could have been done so much better. You know, we really should have seen Greg's face on camera talking to us uh, as a community, showing uh, that he really is sorry. You know, we want to see his face, for goodness sake. We don't want to see a flippant tweet. But I really don't think there's a way back for CrossFit with Greg at the head of it all. So... I can only hope that Greg's comments wasn't out of uh, hate um, or malice towards our black community, um, but just out of his own stupidity and, you know, wanting to pick a fight with, you know, health organizations. Um, and, you know, I'm not the judge of the world. I'm, I'm certainly not going to judge him. But um, I know that a lot of my friends and people that rely on um, the CrossFit brand for their livelihood um, are very upset and very angry and that makes me sad and upset and angry if you're watching this and you're part of the community um, as a gym member or a coach or an owner um, i have full confidence that only good things will come from this and that it'll be changed for the better and although there's lots of hurt and people upset right now i know that once it all kind of washes away and settles down um, that there will be people that will step up in this community and kind of lead the way forwards for us and it's, I'm very ex I'm super excited about it I'm super excited like everything from the identity like the brand identity what are we going to identify as you know if we're not going to be crossfitters what are we going to be um, all the way through to the season for the athletes and what that's going to look like the new structure and um, I just know that there's going to be some awesome stuff that will come from this and like I said before the local gym the local functional training facility the box it's still there it's still good if you're watching this and you're a member of any of these gyms please don't cancel your membership and leave um that's not going to hurt crossfit or greg lasman they're going to be fine it's going to hurt your local gym owner so stick with them support them and ask you know have the conversation with them ask them how they feel about the comments that greg has made and whether they still want to be affiliated with crossfit and kind of make up your mind that way but certainly don't leave your local gym please 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 don't leave your local gym because of what Greg said. So I guess I wanted to make this video to thank Greg for a few things. Firstly, for starting CrossFit, for coming up with the methodology that was so groundbreaking at the time. Um, it really revitalized the whole fitness industry. It revitalized my passion for fitness and it gave me a way out of the machine. So Greg, thank you for that. Thank you, Greg, for not showing up to my gym in 2015 and for showing me that it's not about you it's not about the brand name it's about the people that were sitting in the stands the athletes that were on the floor and the you know the people that were helping me run the event it's about the community so thank you for showing me that by the absence of your presence 
And then lastly, thank you for showing me the kind of leader that I do not want to be, a dictator, someone who wants to have full control and not involve others in the beauty and the magic and the and the journey, but wants to hold on to everything for himself. And it has shown this week that that approach will eventually blow up uh, in your face. I very much doubt that you'll be watching this, Greg, but if somehow you are, do the right thing. Step down, find some help, get someone to take over the leadership, sell the company. Um, just do something right, please. Get in front of a camera and show us your face and say something. Um, I think that's all I've got. Thanks for listening. I just wanted to share that story um, that I thought of this week of Greg disappointing me as a young gym owner and again disappointing me this week. Um, I thought it was interesting. Before I go, I want to leave you with one thing and that is make sure you respond and not react. React is something you do just kind of off the cuff, in the moment, in the heat of the moment, when you're feeling the emotions, whereas responding is something you do when you gather all the information, um, let your emotions um, settle, and then respond in a, um, a way that is positive, that is progressive, that is helpful. Um, so I think if, if all of us can take that approach, um, obviously we want to make our voices heard and how we're feeling, um, but I think it's a, there's definitely a right and a wrong way to do it. And let's not, um, yeah, let's not react in probably the way that Greg reacted to that tweet. So um, guys, I appreciate you. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you soon.